In this business, it's not just about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. I've got one of the best in the business with me today, Vince Lisi, CEO for Berkshire Hathaway, Home Services Ambassador Realty out of Omaha, Nebraska. He's gonna share with us exactly what he teaches all of his agents when it comes to investing in real estate. All right, Vince, let's kind of go in and really talk a little bit about, you know, in reality, we're in this business. Um, one of the biggest things that you and I have talked about is, is that we're in the business, you should be an investor in this business yep. because in reality, that's where true wealth is created. You want to give people a little background on kind of how you got started and maybe share what you see the value of it. Yeah. Um, well, I got started in the business like you. My mom is in the business. Yeah. Um, she unfortunately passed away of cancer in 2001. Um, but. I wish in hindsight I had somebody that encouraged me or pushed me to start investing money. You've always heard like if you go to college and finance classes, you know, start putting money away and it builds over time. But unless somebody really encourages you to do that or shows you how to do that, mm -hmm. you really don't know how to do that. So it was probably in my 30s, I started saying, okay, I was looking at all these people that are building commercial buildings and apartment complexes and, and you know, not as many people were flipping houses or buying houses to rent out it back then, but slowly you start seeing some of the stuff. I'm like, okay, I gotta figure out how to mm -hmm. invest money. Because this is great right now that I've got a job where I've got active income and it supports my lifestyle. But down the road, you want people to have financial security. Right. So we encourage, especially with people in their 20s, I'm like, start the sooner you start, the better off you're gonna be is, listen, live on the income you have, take part of that, pay for your taxes in right. the real estate. Mm -hmm. Agents seem to spend it all and then they don't have money for taxes and they're play, playing catch up. But then start taking some of that and start investing in real estate or other things. I don't even care what you invest in, but we're in the real estate business. Right. So we have a competitive advantage to go buy houses and, and multi-units and stuff like that ourselves uh, and rent those out uh, or flip those or do whatever we want. So in my mind, the younger you are, you should be taking none of your money out of your investments. That money should be being dumped right back into it because you should be in the mode of building net worth. Right. And then as you start getting older, you get to a point where, okay, I need to start having some passive income because my active income is going down a little bit. I want to start living on that. And then when you retire, you have no active income and you want to be at a point there where you've got so much net worth, right? Your assets are so big that you have all this passive income that it's basically replaced your active income that you had from your job before. Right. And then that way you don't miss the beat. You're financially secure you have money left to leave for your kids or other people when you die. Yeah, really but the good. sooner you start, the better off you are. Absolutely, the, the compounding of time is, yep. is, is just something that you can't replace. Uh, a lot of people will say, well, gosh, I don't have any money. Um, yep. Let's talk about some of those ways, whether it be with finding an, an investment partner, whether it be hard money, whether, whatever it is, let's just get real practical because um, that's the excuse. And it really, um, if you just dig just a little bit deeper, it's really not um, something that you, you Right. You really have to overcome. I have people come to me and I'm like, listen, if you bring me a deal, I'll help finance part of your part and we'll be partners on this thing, mm -hmm. right? Let them do the, the grunt work, for better mm -hmm. use of the word, mm -hmm. and, 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 and go out and do a bunch of stuff and then come up with opportunities. So be out there looking for opportunities all the time. Um, so there are people that will do that with you. And we have some of our large teams are like, join my team. One of the things I'll do is, you know, we'll flip houses together. You find the house, bring it to me. I'll help finance that for you. And then you start building where you can get your own money to, to do things bigger. Because ultimately, you can, you know, I now do mainly apartment buildings or apartments and stuff like mm -hmm. uh, uh, office buildings and apartments and stuff like that. Is you move on to bigger things right. that can give you bigger returns. The thing in real estate, though, you have to understand is it's not sexy. It's not the stock market going up 20, 30 percent or down 20, 30 percent uh, in a very rapid period of time. Mm -hmm. But over time, if you have an investment in real estate, whether it's an office building, an apartment complex, or a single family house that you're renting out. Mm -hmm. If your debt is X and your rents covered that and you have cash flow on top of that, you now have somebody else living there or renting your space from you in an office building or whatever you're doing and you're gaining equity in a number of ways, right? Your principal balance is being paid down on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Typically in real estate over time, we've always found that it appreciates. Mm -hmm. Rents we've seen for the last 15 years continue to go up. Um, and, and, and if you dive in this deeper, you start figuring out what cap rates are and how you, what your rate of return on investments are and stuff like that. Uh, and and it's a simple cap rate of 7% on something says that if I paid cash for it, I get a 7% return. Well, if rents go up just 2% a year, exponentially over time, you, your investment is worth a lot more. You're getting tax breaks on this. That's right. You're building equity by paying down your principal. 
Um, and you know, 10 years down the road, you have an asset that starts out as a very small asset that becomes a very large asset. Yeah, and it continues to grow. That's the thing too, is, is obviously talk with your own accountant and your CPA, but yes. the tax advantages are pretty amazing. And uh, it's set up to encourage the investment in home ownership and in investing in real estate. A couple things, uh, really, you know, from a basic standpoint, there's so many different ways to do this. There's obviously the single family home yep. where you're buying and you're holding. There's the buying something, renovating it, and selling it. Yep. All of those are different for different things. I will say this, I always tell people it's either sweat or debt. You're either, you're yep. either gonna put the sweat in yep. or you're gonna have the debt in there. Yep. Um, but there are people that can do either or if right. those are not your areas that you're best at. So it really is just finding the deals. We're in this market every day. We see these opportunities, especially once, what I found is, is once you start looking for the opportunities, you start seeing them everywhere. Absolutely. Um, and also this is kind of a strategy that we've talked about with a lot of people is, um, I started out right out of college with Merrill Lynch and they talked about laddering bonds. And basically what the principle is, is that you want, you can never time the market. Exactly. So what you would do is you would buy consistently one every year and then at the, you do this for seven to eight years and basically then you would have that ladder. And then when you got to the seventh year, basically, yep. you would have there where you would evaluate that one that was on the bottom of the rung and you would say, is it still profitable or should I rotate into something else? Right. You would either keep it and then, or you'd roll it to the bottom rung. Yep. Once you do that, then you've got something to in retirement where if you just sold one every other year or you decided to keep the revenue, you've got options. Yep. So the consistency gives you the ability to not have to try to time right. the market. And as you said, it's important to talk to your accountant because tax ramifications matter. You need to understand if you flip a house, that's ordinary income. I do land development, that's ordinary income. Right. But if I buy an office building or apartment complex or single family houses, I can take that and sell it later as a long-term gain, so that's a lower tax rate. Right. right. You need to look at your total return. Does affect, taxes affects what you make at the end of the day? So you need to understand that. But the huge competitive advantage we even have in real estate is we can do a 1031 exchange. Mm -hmm. So you can take like-type properties, right? You can take real estate and put in other real estate. I can get rid of one office building, go to another office building, you get rid of uh, one investment property or some, and, and flip those into other investment properties, and you can avoid the tax and even kick it down the road farther. Mm -hmm. right. So when you take the tax ramifications into consideration, plus equity we've been paid down, which means your uh, the principal we've been paid down, which means your equity is becoming more appreciation. When you look over ten year spans, it does become sexy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're like, how? Wow. I wish I've had so many people saying, I wish I had more of these. I wish I started doing this earlier. And that's kind of where I was. I'm like, God, why didn't I start doing this earlier in my life? Yeah, this, it, it really is. It's the, it's, we're in this business. What a crime it would be to go in and be in this business for 25 years and not take advantage of everything yeah. that you're learning. And also, um, one of the things from a sales perspective is, is once you see the deals, if you're not at a place where you're doing it, I promise you'll begin to get all of these investors. Investors rarely sit still. Yep. They're either buying another property, they're repositioning, yep. or they're at a place where they're in a cash crunch and they need to sell something. So that's a great group of clients also to have uh, uh, that you're working with. And that's, we've really been talking about personal investing for us or the agents, right. but that's what everyone should be looking at. Is there are plenty of investors. We have way more investors than we've ever had in the past. We have way more single family houses being rented out VRBO or rented out you know, mm -hmm. on an annual basis to people. Uh, look for investors. That's, that's, a, that's a revenue stream that I think the vast majority of agents don't focus on. Yeah, and the beauty of it now that the, you know when you and I were coming up, I mean, we'd have to go try to find books, or we'd have to go to the library right. or do something. And I make, can't read, so that's not good. <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest thing now is, is um, I'll give you kind of this three, two, one. You and I were talking about this yesterday. Three, two, one process of learning anything that I've been trying to apply in my own personal yep. life is if you want to know something. There's so much available video-wise, podcast-wise, yep. book-wise. It's made it a lot out. easier. Oh yeah, just go out and spend one week, watch three videos, three videos of somebody doing this. Yep listen to two podcasts, yep. read one book. Yep. If you'll do just that basic format, first right. off, what it'll do is it'll expand what you know. Second thing it's gonna do is probably gonna get you going in a direction, get you excited about this. There's more information than there's ever been out there and it'd just be a crime not to do this right now. Yep. And this is something I find the majority of people do this, they're passionate about, they love it. Absolutely. And again, right, as I talk about, if you love what you're doing, it's gonna be much easier to be successful to put extra time, energy, and effort into the thing and the byproduct of that's going to be is you're going to be really good at it. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to make a lot of money on it. Yeah. Listen, I hope uh, this has hit home for you. I hope it encourages you to go out to learn more about investing, to find some investor clients, and even more importantly than anything, go out and invest yourself. We've been put in this business with this knowledge. What a shame it would be not to use it. So thanks, Vince, for everything you do for Absolutely, the industry buddy. as a whole. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching the video. 
I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.